Hey folks, how's it going? I've put together a, a little tutorial to show you how to build a custom iPhone, iPad, or iPod controller for the XSplit Broadcaster using uh, some software, uh, using Hexler's Touch OSC and Bohm's MIDI Translator Classic Edition. Uh, the links for, for both of those are going to be down at the, uh, the bottom of this video. So uh, let's get right into this. Uh, first we need to set up some hotkeys in XSplit Broadcaster. So I'll go ahead and set those up right now. Um, ones we're going to mess with right now are going to be switch to scene 1 and switch to scene 2. Uh, I've already got those couple of ones set. And then of course I'm going to want to set up a local recording. So I'll just quickly create a little hotkey for that. Okay, once we've got um, those all set up, we just need to keep in mind our, our key combos because we're going to need those a little later. Um, but now we get into the fun stuff. Let's, let's actually design what our controller is going to look like on the uh, on the uh, iPad, um, per se. So we're going to open up uh, Touch OSC's uh, editor. It's their little GUI to develop out um, the, the UI that you're actually going to use on the, the iPad itself. Uh, currently defaults to iPhone or iPod Touch, so I'm going to set that to iPad and go horizontal here on this one. Um, now working in this editor is actually really easy to do. Everything's pretty much done via a context menu. Right click and you can add all sorts of different uh, things. And, and I'll sort of explain what some of this is a little later, but, but for right now, we're just going to care about just a couple of buttons. So I'm going to add a push button here, and we'll make it nice and big. There, red. That looks good. Sure. And add a couple more here. So I'll actually change the color on these ones to make up blue. Copy and paste. Got two nice little ones here. We'll kind of lay this out a little better. Make it look good. Add some labels. Uh, horizontal label. No, we don't want that one. Vertical label there. So what our controller is basically going to do for us, the one that we're just going to build right click or right, right click is uh, just have a couple of buttons so we can um, switch between the two scenes here because right now I've got in Exploit I've got two scenes set up so scene one and scene two just the same kind of thing just a little bit different perspective uh, on those and then be able to hit the record button so we can actually it would activate our, our local recording uh, via our, our hotkey um, okay so these aren't really aligned so let's get this make it a little better here. Let's align this to the center of each other. And let's align these to the middle. Why not? There we go. Actually, no. Let's do the top. Okay. So now those ones look nice. Um, okay, so what Touch OSC actually is, is it's a uh, application that's going to send and receive many signals over the uh, over a Wi-Fi connection to the, the host computer and um, this is going to be for primarily like um, DJing software and some software uses MIDI and, and whatnot so on your machine that's running XSplit you also need to make sure that you've got the uh, Touch OSC bridge running so you can have a communication between Touch OSC on the iPad and X or your computer running the XSplit. So since this is all running MIDI, let's say here what we need to actually click on this and come to the uh, MIDI channel for a button. And we're going to say that uh, channel 1, number 0, will be for record. And scene 1 can be channel 2, number 0. And scene 2 can be channel 2, number 1. 
and you don't really need to understand what this all necessarily correlates to as far as all the MIDI um, stuff goes. Just understand that each button needs its own kind of unique channel and, and number, and I'll show you why here in a second. Um, now that we, we say we've liked this, let's go ahead and, and we can save this. And I'll just call this tutorial. Um, and in order to get it out onto the device itself, it's su super easy. Hit the sync button. And on my iPad, fire up touch OSC and just sort of show you like what a, a default interface could potentially look like uh, like I said it's mostly used for DJing software so you've got all this really nice functionality to tie into a controller and, and, and do everything else um, and that's sort of what this is made for but like said, we're, we're not going to do that quite so um, in order to get our newly recorded, our newly created UI onto it, we just go out to layouts here and we hit add. And it's not going to find my host right now due to some firewalling that I have in place, but we can just go create a new one and put in my host IP address. Tap that guy, and there's our tutorial that we just created. So we can hit done on this, and there it is, live on the iPad. We can touch the buttons, they light up. Doesn't do anything at the moment because we haven't quite told it to do anything. But if you notice, in the kind of the upper right corner there, you got this little blinking green light. That means that it is actually sending um, MIDI signals back to the touch OSC bridge which is then doing nothing with them right now because nothing's told it to. Uh, so the other half of this equation is to use another piece of software, the one I mentioned earlier called um, Bohm's MIDI Translator Classic Edition and here's kind of what this guy looks like here. And so first thing what you want to do is once you get this this running and all this is is freeware you can you can get this uh, not, not have to spend anything on it, you just have to put up a little delay when it starts. Same with Exploit Broadcaster, I'm, I'm using the, the free version of that. So make sure that we have MIDI in for Touch OSC. And we can even go MIDI out for Touch OSC because we have the ability to send MIDI signals back to our application, change uh, states and, and things of that nature. So we could have like LEDs light up on various different things if we, if we so choose. First thing we want to do though is uh, create a new project and we're just going to call this tutorial and uh, let's get some triggers going on here and we'll call this one uh, start broadcast edit this guy and this is where it gets super simple so uh, we want to make sure our record button is actually mapped to our record so we can hit Capture MIDI. Maybe. So hit Capture MIDI. And then on our iPad, just tap the uh, tap the button once and you see it automatically fills in everything that we're gonna want to do on that one. And then so we go to outbound. And normally you'd pass as many message along as something else, but what we're, we're going to want to do is use the keystroke uh, emulation and enter in our keystroke. So for mine, oh, that's incorrect actually, it was going to be Control Shift Alt 2, which you can see here in the background has actually started streaming, so let me just hit that again. I don't, I don't need it running right now. And we can apply that. And so whenever we tap this button, it'll apply this particular keystroke to our system uh, and then go. So let's add a couple more here for uh, 
see one and see two. Capture the MIDI for scene one. Now calling keystroke. Okay, now that our, our whole thing's up, we probably just want to go ahead and save that as um, presets that you'd use, so we can go... and then we can load up this anytime and then this minimizes nicely away to the task tray so you don't actually have to look at it but uh, there we go so now we're using our iPad to switch between scenes so now to scene one come back to scene two and we can actually start to record I can see here it's not recording uh, my local stream up here on this turn that off and to give you kind of an idea of um, what all you can kind of do with this this was uh, really simple and so we can actually go back to this here and I've got a different layout different layout that I'll uh, load up here in the editor Sync that to the device itself. Uh, all right, so that's the uh, the new kind of layout there. I can stop the sync. Get rid of that actually. Uh, now go back into bones, which seem to have actually closed out. Let's start this back up again. toggling the mics off and off uh, and everything else so now I should be able to just use the iPad here to see these are using some toggle buttons these three currently aren't mapped to anything but if I hit this guy it starts uh, broadcasting to Twitch TV on my stream I can switch to scene one and then scene two three and four I don't really have anything on those at the moment back to scene one but then I can actually toggle the mic here and toggle the speakers all in XSplit and it's all done completely wirelessly from from the iPad here so you can see that this is actually still just the iPad like that. Uh, if you have any questions or anything else just uh, put some comments in the video below and I'll answer them uh, as uh, best I can. Thanks!